In this problem, we are given an L-shaped beam attached to a wall at E, constrained by a roller at C. There is a hinge at D. The beam is loaded by a uniformly distributed load, W, and a horizontal force to WA. What makes this problem different from other problems is that first it involves L-shape, then it involves a horizontal force, so we will have normal internal forces, or we will have tension or compression in the members, and we have a hinge. So I will begin by looking at the hinge. That's probably the most important element in this problem. Let me observe that the hinge is a joint that does not constrain rotations. Therefore, if I cut out the left section of the beam, then at C, where I have a roller, I have a vertical force, and at D, I have two forces, the shear force VD and the normal force ND. There is no bending moment at D precisely because it's a hinge. This free body diagram involves three unknowns, and I can write down equilibrium equations using C as a pivot, and this gives me the forces at C and D. Next, I will draw the free body diagram for the right segment of the beam. Here, the forces at D have been already determined and shown here with proper signs. And on the right, at E, I show the reaction forces, but I will use the sign convention for the internal forces, and therefore they are shown as VE and ME. Both approaches are perfectly fine. I can treat these forces either as internal forces in the beam or as reaction forces. The equilibrium equations given here, and this gives us the unknown forces at E. Now, what I need to do, I need to deal with the L shape. To deal with the L shape, I will simply cut off the vertical part of the beam, and since at B, the horizontal and vertical parts are connected by a regular joint, then such a joint would impose constraints on both translations and the rotation. Therefore, I show forces BX, horizontal translation, vertical translation, and rotation, and I can analyze this free body diagram and determine the forces at B. This results in two free body diagrams. These free body diagrams basically list all of the external forces acting on the beam. And you can see that in addition to the vertical forces, there are horizontal forces that clearly produce tension equal to 2WA in both segments of the beam. So adding horizontal forces typically is not a complicated task. Now let me construct the shear force and bending moment diagrams. I will do it using equilibrium relationships. So for the left beam, I start with N equal to WA, and it persists throughout the beam. V starts with zero, 
and the bending moment starts with minus 2 wa squared. Since v is equal to 0, the value of m is constant. Now, at the point C, the shear force diagram experiences a jump, positive to WA, no jump in M. Since there is no distributed load, the shear force diagram is constant, and the bending moment diagram proceeds with the slope equal to WA from minus to WA squared to zero. The fact that we have zero at this point is very important because we have a hinge here. Also, please pay attention that 2WA here is consistent with this value of 2WA and of course tension 2WA is consistent with this one. Now, for the right beam, the normal force is constant, as before. The shear force starts with 2WA and proceeds with the negative slope equal to minus W for the length 2A. As a result, V arrives at 0. The moment diagram starts with 0. Here is a hinge. And then it increases. The slope decreases, right, and it becomes flat at the right end. The maximum value of the bending moment on this segment is simply equal to the area of this triangle, 2WA times 2A. The base and the height give us the area equal to 2WA squared. There are no critical points, so there is no minimum or maximum for this diagram. Finally, we can put it all together by simply combining the free body diagram of the entire beam with the diagrams for the normal force, shear force, and bending moment. Thank you.